Hey everybody, I just got this brand new 450 watt portable panel from Zoop W, and I'm really excited to see how it performs. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed, see how long it takes to set up, and then we'll do some testing. Now I like that this solar panel comes with this carrying case. Um, it does seem to have kind of some thick fabric to it. I think it'll protect the solar panel, but let's go ahead and get it out. Okay, nice and easy so far. Oh, it does have padding on the front and back. Ooh, that's light. Uh, they say it's about 27 pounds, so not too bad. Um, there are some straps here. Let's go ahead and undo those. And then that should allow it to flip out. Let's get all the legs at the same height here. These are adjustable, so you can adjust, you can adjust the legs to be higher or shorter. But uh, yeah, sweet. So here's a closer look at the solar panel that's set up. There are four individual panels all wired together. And then each one has its own kickstand, which helps it set up pretty straight. Like I said, they are adjustable. I do like that it has these bumpers on the corner. You can see that each panel has those bumpers. And then you have two of these carrying handles in the middle. Let's take a closer look at the solar cells, see what technology it's using. Now you'll notice that this uses an ETFE coating. This is IP68 waterproof rated. Now as for the actual cells, they use type N cells with 16 bus bars. And you'll notice that they are also chopped into thirds. So these are third cut cells and that tends to help with partial shading performance. Now in order to get peak power, it's important that you angle the solar panel properly. And I wanna use the kickstands to do that. We're just past winter solstice, meaning that we have to have the solar panel as steep as possible. So you can see I have these legs straight up and down, give it the steepest angle. Now, if we do the can trick here, you can see that even with the solar panel at the steepest angle, it's still not quite steep enough to get ideal power. We'd wanna see somewhere around there to completely get rid of the shadow, but we'll see how much power we're getting with it angled with the kickstands. Now on the back of the solar panel for your output, you have MC4 connections. And in the zipped pouch, you actually get this MC4 extension cable, super heavy duty. I like the quality of that. And then you also have these adapters that are available too. So you get XT60, Anderson, 7909, and 8020 for a variety of different power stations. Now before connecting up the solar panel to my power station, I wanted to check the voltage open circuit. We're sitting at 47.1. And in the owner's manual, it states that the voltage open circuit should be 45.9. It is a bit cold today, so voltage is just a little bit higher. So I've just connected the solar panel into the power station. This is the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. And if you look at the screen, we are showing 468 watts input, 69, kind of jumping around a little bit. But look at that, guys. We are getting over the rated power. This is rated for 450 watts. Now in the next test, I want to see how these solar panels are wired together. The main MC4 connection is on that far panel, and then there's a series of jumper cables between each one of these. So I wanna check the amperage flowing through each one. Are we going to see 2.5 amps, or are we gonna see 10 amps? That will tell us if these are wired in series or parallel. So with my clamp meter on one of these wires, I'm showing about 2.6 to 2.7 amps flowing through it. So these do appear to be wired together in parallel. Now just to confirm, I'm measuring the next connection down and we are seeing double the amperage. So yes, they are paired up in parallel for a total of around 10 to 11 amps. Now before jumping into any other test on the solar panel, like the partial shading test, I want to talk about the price of this solar panel because I think it's actually really good. And if you look on their website, or at least on Amazon where it's for sale, it's priced at $509 with a $30 coupon, bringing the price down to around $479 or about $1.06 per watt. Now, if you compare that to any other brand of portable solar panel, you know, the Anchor ones, the Blue Eddy ones, things like that, you're talking about two to $3 per watt, and this is only $1 per watt. And it's using the N-type solar cells with the 16 bus bars. And the build quality is actually very impressive. I really like the build quality. This might be my new favorite 400 watt folding solar panel but we still have to do the partial shading test. So let's do that next. So I have this ladder here casting its shadow on the final solar panel. If you remember, the power kind of starts down there. They're all wired in parallel and then the output is on this one. We were getting 465 watts before. What are we getting now? So with the ladder shading that one panel, we are getting 393 watts. So yes, we are still getting power from three of the other solar panels and still a little bit of power on this last one. Now in the next test, I've moved the ladder over so it's casting its shadow on two of these solar panels. 
Now, obviously, solar panels are going to get the most power when you don't have any shade on them, but how does it perform if you have shade on two of the solar panels? So if you look at the screen here, we're getting right around 300 watts, so 299 to 300 watts. So still very good performance with shadows on two of those solar panels. Now I almost failed to mention another accessory that's included with this 450 watt panel, and it's actually these leg stakes. So I've moved the panel here to the grass to demonstrate anchoring down the solar panel with these included stakes. So in case you have some sort of wind, you can actually keep it from blowing over. Now here's a closer look at one of those stakes. You do get four of these in the bag. You get this plastic plate that slides on to give it more surface area. At the bottom of the stake, it is sharpened and they do seem very stiff. Now these are designed to go over the kickstand like this and then you push them in the ground. However, right now, because it's been so cold, the ground is completely frozen, so I can only get this in about an inch in the ground. So best use case for these stakes is gonna be in the fall, the spring, or in the summer when the ground is not frozen. So now I'm just curious, how does the Renogy 400 watt suitcase stand up against the Zoop W 450 watt solar panel? The design is very similar on each of these. They both have the metal frames. They both have the fiberglass backer board. Um, this one has an older solar cell design because the Zoop W uses the N-type solar cells. Um, you know, this is only rated at 400 watts, but the Zoop W puts out more power and possibly is less expensive. Let's find out. So I've lined up both of the solar panels so they're equal on that far side. You can see the Zoop W is just a little bit taller. And then coming down to this end, I'd say the Zoop W is about eight to 10 inches wider. So it is a larger solar panel. They both have the plastic bumpers and handles. And then looking at the actual cases, the Zoop W case is padded. It has a much thicker fabric. And then the Renogy is just a thinner fabric with no padding. So let's see how these actually perform. I'm gonna let the Renogy solar panel warm up a bit and then we'll test it out. So I've just finished setting up the Renogy 400 watt suitcase and you'll notice right away that it's a bit flatter and that's because the kickstands aren't quite as tall. If the kickstands were taller, you'd be able to see it at a steeper angle. And so in the winter months, um, you aren't gonna see quite as much power using the kickstands. So let's see what we're getting on the Delta 3 Plus. So we're seeing about 338 to 339 watts input from the Renogy 400 watt solar panel. Now guys, I understand that I'm testing this solar panel later in the day than when I tested this solar panel. So what I'm thinking right now is I've angled up this solar panel to be steeper. We're gonna quickly test this. We're gonna move it out of the way and then we'll test that solar panel one more time just to see the power difference. So let's see what this panel's getting at the steeper angle. So as we've adjusted the angle to be steeper, we're getting 354 to 355 watts input, oh, just a little bit more. So almost 30 watts more as the solar panel is aimed better at the sun. Now I've quickly moved the Renogy 400 watt solar panel and set up the Zoop W450. So let's see how the power compares to what we were seeing before. So before we were seeing about 468 watts and now we're seeing about 455. So the power has dropped down but we are still seeing quite a bit more power from this solar panel. Now I'm pretty surprised that we're still getting full rated power from this solar panel, even though it's not angled perfectly at the sun anymore. You can see the shadow here. It's just really off to the side, still getting full power output. And that just tells you how much the technology is improving in these portable solar panels. So um, the price used to be really, really high on these. And now we can see it's coming down. I really like these hybrid frame designs. So the fiberglass backer and the lightweight metal frame with the kickstands, and they fold up really small. So comparing both these solar panels, you can see they're both around $500, but this one here gives you about 120 watts more power output. So very impressive results, guys. Let me know what you think about the Zoop W450 down in the comment section. I don't even know how to say that. It's like Zoop W, so I, I guess that's what I'm calling it. What would you guys call it? So after the testing today, I think I found my new favorite 400 watt folding solar panel. Now I appreciate Zoop W sending this out for the testing video. Hopefully you guys can see that the results were pretty clear for themselves that this definitely produces more power for the same price as other options that are currently available. Now I am curious to see how this does in the high temperatures because solar panels will usually put out less power as they get hotter, but this does have the newer N-type solar cells, so they are supposed to do better in high heat. So what I'm thinking is that I'll retest both of these solar panels and maybe any other you know, new 400 watt rigid frame solar panels that I get like this, this kind of hybrid design, 
later in the year when it's super hot. If you guys want to see that, throw a comment down below. Now guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I will include the link to this solar panel down in the video description if you guys are interested in learning more. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.